My, my grandparents tried to get out of Germany since uh, Hitler came to power. Kristallnacht came, and both of my grandfathers had to go into hiding. When the Nazis came to get my grandfather, my grandmother answered the door and said to them, why are you here? You've already taken him away. And they believed her, and so my grandfather was safe. Both my mother and my father's family left Germany on August 28, 1939. My parents were agnostics, and we, we didn't talk about God, but we were very involved in synagogue life. I went to Hebrew school. I was a member of an Israeli dance troupe, president of my youth group. I went to Jewish summer camp. I never had a bat mitzvah because back in those days they weren't available for women yet. I fit in more with German Jews than I did with Americans. I went to Jewish summer camp every summer. It was called um, the Joseph Eisner Camp Institute for Living Judaism in the heart of the Berkshire Mountains. We sang uh, from the Psalms, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. From whence will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And I remember singing that song, and I looked up into the sky and thinking to myself, God, what are you? Are you a force of, or are you a spirit? I don't know who you are. I had always had a dream when I was, since I was very little, of going to uh, Cornell University for college. And so my father told me, go into social work. That's what good Jewish women do. They go into social work. So my junior year, I started at Cornell. You know, the, the future was looming out ahead of me, and I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. I was really anxious about the future. I was really nervous. and. I just started looking for answers. Why am I here? What's the purpose of my life? I started studying all kinds of religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism, Zoroastrianism. I guess I just felt like the, the, the answers I was looking for, I hadn't found within Judaism, so I had to look outside. But what I found was they were so esoteric, they were so heavenly minded that they weren't of any earthly good. There was no way that I could really put them into practice in my life. While I was going through this search, one of my Jewish friends came to me and told me about this book that he had just read, The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. I finally went to the bookstore on campus and I got the book. I learned, first of all, reading this book that Jesus was Jewish and that he was a direct descendant of King David. There were many prophets that spoke about the Messiah to come and this author was saying that Jesus was the one who fulfilled these prophecies. I prayed for the first time in my life. I prayed to God and I said to God, God, I don't know if, if this author is, if what this author is writing is true please show me the truth. I was in the library one day and happened to meet another uh, woman who was in one of my classes with me and sat down in the library and started talking. She was the most loving, kind, patient, understanding person I ever met. Within the space of a few weeks, this woman that I had just met became the best friend that I ever had. We went to lunch. And a woman sat down with us at lunch. And we talked, and then this woman turned to me and she said to me, do you know Jesus? Is he your Messiah? I looked at her and I looked at my friend, and my friend had this expression on her face that said to me that she was agreeing with what this woman was saying. And I looked at my friend and I, and I was about to start screaming and yelling at her. How can you believe in that stuff? That's all malarkey. It's all fairy tales. It's all nonsense. And then all of a sudden, I heard a still small voice. And the voice said, listen to her. She loves you. She's your best friend. <laughs> and so I, I listened to her. And she told me her story.
because of the love that I experienced from this woman, I, I just knew that what she was talking about was the truth. And so at that luncheon table with hundreds of people around us, I just prayed a very simple prayer. And um, I invited Jesus to come into my life. All of my fears about the future just completely vanished. I was just filled with it. It was like I was enveloped in a cloud of peace. It was like there was this dome of peace that just came over me. I was a member of the Cornell Choir, and we had been scheduled to sing the night when I accepted Jesus as my Messiah. And the concert that we gave was Handel's Messiah. So I got to stand on that platform singing Handel's Messiah that night for the first time understanding what Isaiah was talking about. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. That was Yeshua, that was, the, that was Jesus, that was the Messiah. I just recognized him, I just came to know him. And so the words became alive in my mouth. I was looking for purpose and meaning in my life. Why was I created? What was the purpose of life? Why was I here? And through Jesus, God answered all those questions for me. I realized that I was created to have a relationship with God and that God loves me and He wants to be in a relationship with me. And He wants that relationship to go on forever and ever and ever.